viewers welcome back to our channel low point this is anisha babu effectiveness of a law is determined by the reliefs it provides more than a decade since the domestic violence act was introduced women in india slowly and steadily recognize the protection the legal system offers them today we'll be discussing about various reliefs a court can pass in favor of the domestic violence victims we have a supreme court of india's advocate on record mrs prisina elizabeth joseph to explain the same so let's watch in the last session we saw ways in which you can file a domestic violence complaint on receiving such complaint the magistrate can pass any of the five below orders in favor of the victim the first one is residence orders every woman in a domestic relationship has the right to reside in the shared household even if she has no ownership in the same she cannot be evicted from the shared household if circumstances are such that the aggrieved woman or the victim woman cannot live together with her husband or his relatives then the husband needs to either provide same level of alternate accommodation for his wife or pay rent for the accommodation that his wife chooses if necessary the magistrate can also restrict the husband or any of his relatives from entering any portion of the shared household in which the aggrieved victim woman resides second is protection orders depending on the facts of each case magistrate may pass protection order in favor of the victim woman which includes prohibiting the opposite party from assisting or encouraging or committing any act of domestic violence prohibiting them from entering victim's place of employment magistrate can restrain the opposite party from calling messaging or sending letters emails or communicating through social media with the aggrieved woman if the same cause domestic violence to the victim woman magistrate can restrain the opposite party from transferring or disposing of any assets or strengthen of the victim or those held jointly by both the parties magistrate can prohibit the opposite party from operating or using bank lockers or bank accounts of the victim or those held jointly by the parties it's important to note that with the permission of the magistrate the opposite party can dispose of the assets or operate the bank account or bank lockers etc the magistrate under protection order can restrain the opposite party from causing violence to the dependents or other relatives or any other person who assists the victim woman from domestic violence apart from the above orders the magistrate can also pass similar protection orders depending on the facts and circumstances of the case in the interest of justice now we will be dealing with custody orders if at the time of filing the domestic violence complaint the mother does not have custody of her minor child or children she can seek temporary custody of her minor child or children at any stage of hearing of the domestic violence case and the magistrate while considering the application for protection order can grant temporary custody of the child or children to the mother magistrate may also specify as to the frequency and the place for visit of such child or children by their father if the magistrate is of the opinion that any visit of the father is not in the best interest of the child then the magistrate can refuse to allow such a visit now we will be dealing with interim and final maintenance orders when the domestic violence case is going on the magistrate can pass interim direction to the husband of the victim woman to pay monthly maintenance amount for her and her child to meet the immediate and urgent basic necessities like food house medical expenses education expenses and also to cover standard of living etc since this is called interim maintenance order this remains in force only during the period the domestic violence proceedings are pending in the court this interim monthly maintenance amount includes an order of maintenance under section 125 of the code of criminal procedure section 125 of the code of criminal procedure also empowers the magistrate to direct the husband who in spite of having sufficient means 
neglects or refuses to maintain his legally wedded wife who is unable to maintain herself to pay a monthly maintenance amount. Under Section 125 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, the word wife includes a divorced wife who has not remarried. So it's important to note here in that the Domestic Violence Act is operating in a wider sphere than Section 125 of the Code of Criminal Procedure because Criminal Procedure Code benefit is only to the wife. But in domestic violence, it's not necessary that the victim woman need to be a legally wedded wife. The law recognizes a leaving relationship also. For example, if wife is granted monthly maintenance under Section 125 of the Code of Criminal Procedure and thereafter a domestic violence case is also instituted, then the Domestic Violence Court should adjust the amount granted under Section 125 while determining any further amount to be awarded in domestic violence case. Now we will deal with final maintenance order. While disposing the application of domestic violence, Magistrate Court fixes adequate, fair and reasonable final maintenance amount consistent with the standard of leaving to which the victim woman is accustomed depending on the financial capacity of the husband, earnings of the victim woman, etc. Now we will be dealing with compensation orders. While disposing of domestic violence application, the magistrate may direct the opposite party respondent to pay a lump sum amount as compensation for the injuries and losses suffered by the woman victim, including mental torture and emotional distress caused by the acts of domestic violence, litigation expenses, medical expenses, loss of earnings, damage to assets, etc. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Till then, take care. Bye bye.